Hi Flosstube, I'm Rachel Stitchy Rach here on Flosstube and on Instagram. It is Friday the 29th of April and this is a YouTube channel about cross stitch. Hi everyone, hope you survived the last couple of weeks. Um, I have and I'm here to talk to you today about uh, everything I've been stitching and everything I'm planning to stitch uh, in the coming month. If you've been here before you may, have, may notice the location change. Um, my parents-in-law are here at the moment and really really they expect a bed so the spare room is out of bounds um, and so I am camped in the corner of my bedroom at the moment so hopefully the lighting won't be too bad I don't think it's ideal but hopefully it won't be too bad uh, and I'll tell you about everything I've been stitching and everything I intend to stitch uh, welcome back if you've been here before and big welcome if it's your first time here. I hope you're going to like what I've got to show you and you'll give me a like and subscribe and perhaps leave me a comment. Uh, today I have three stitching whips and a knitting whip to show you. I don't have any finishes or FFOs but I have all the plans. Obviously we're at the end of the month but 29th of April so we're heading into May. And that can only mean Stitch Mania. Um, I'm sure most of you are familiar with Stitch Mania, but if you're not, it has morphed over the years into kind of any stitching challenge thing you really want to set yourself. Originally, I think it started as uh, 15 starts in the first 15 days of May. But as I say, it's gradually morphed into all different things that I'm going to talk to you about what I'm going to be doing and show you the new starts that I have planned and kitted up. Um, what else do I have? I have a couple of teeny tiny bits of haul and I will announce the winner of the giveaway from the last video and I have to get through all that in just under half an hour so I really need to get cracking. If I have time, I think you can see the bottom of a frame here and this is a piece of stitching that I didn't do, that someone else did and if I have time at the end I will show you what that is if I remember but I want to get through the main the main body of what I have to do and if I don't show it to you today I'll show it to you in two, two weeks time. So last time I saw you I was plugging away on my big alphabet sampler so if you've been here before you'll know I have a massive alphabet stitching piece that my goal is to finish this year and so I'm really plugging away at it and I was going to, what well, I said going to, did have a monogamous stitching April and at the beginning of April I said I really hope I will get two if not three blocks done on this and just get on a real big roll and it'll be aces. Monogamy is a bust, absolute bust. I achieved not very much. So last time you saw this piece and I will show you what this piece is this piece that I am speaking about when she finds the right sheet must get more organized Rachel before you start filming is this it is Bouncing Babies ABC by Lucy Heaton this is available on her website which I will link in the description box below Last time you saw this, I was plugging away on A is for Apple. And I have now finished the A is for Apple Square. And here it is in all its glory. Isn't that fabulous? So I started this in the middle. So I have now actually finished the vast majority. I have the bottom line to completely do and then three more blocks on this top row and then I am finished. I was hoping <laughs> in April that I would finish A, C and maybe the corner block but we got A done and no more. As I say monogamy was a complete bust. I didn't achieve anything I wanted to but but I love that apple. I think that apple was the thing that actually attracted me to this giant giant piece which is 400 stitches wide by 480 long. It's stitched on 36 count white Edinburgh linen and I'm using all the called for DMC. So I finished that and then, when did I finish that? A, maybe Monday night? Yes, it was Monday night because 
because I stayed up really late to do it. I was like, my husband said, oh, I'm, I'm going to go to bed, I feel really tired. And I was on the kind of the green on this side of the apple. And there were a few more rows of the green to do and I said, I'm just going to finish this colour. And I finished that colour. And then there were a few, then the apple was nearly finished. So I thought, oh, I'll just finish the apple. And then I thought, oh, I'll just finish the words. So I pushed on through, I think it was about one, half past one, something like that. And I was like, oh, I'm ready for bed now. And I went up to bed and I lay down. And I just couldn't sleep. I just, my, I was just awake. You know, that awful feeling where you're just lying there awake and just sleep was nowhere near me. And I was just finally starting to drift off. I think it was about quarter past two, half past two. And our youngest turned up in our bedroom and said that she'd had a nightmare and she needed to get into our bed, which is fine. But then she just wriggled for like two hours. And I was lying there going, oh my God, I'm gonna have to get up soon take everyone to school and I've had no sleep, I had no sleep and then you know then you start panicking and you get into a bit of a cycle about it and I finally fell asleep about quarter past four and I had to get up at right six so Tuesday was great that was fun anyway so yes it was Monday night I finished that and then I thought well there's no way I'm going to get another block finished in the five or six days left in April particularly as we're going out tonight and then the in-laws are here at the weekend so it's just not going to happen. So I thought instead of starting something else I'm going to stitch on something else. So instead of starting another block on this, I just elbowed my wardrobe there, I'm going to get out something else that I can make some real progress on in those six days. Um, rather than just do a, a little bitty bit and then have to put it away for mania. So as I say, monogamy was a bust, didn't get anywhere near the three boxes I wanted to get done, but another one done and I do love the apple. So we're edging closer, edging closer to the finish. So what did I get out to make progress on in five or six days? I got out my other massive 2022 goal. And my other massive 2022 goal is my Snoopy Afghan. So again, for those of you that have been there before, here before, you'll be really super familiar with this. It's just loads and loads of the Peanuts gang on an Afghan blanket. And so I actually skipped the corner square because the next one that really needs stitching, if I just follow it round, is another big one like this, but I'm not going to get that done in six days. But these figures, these the people, they take me about four or five days stitching so I thought great that is what I will do. So I pulled this out and I've started Peppermint Patty. I know she looks very blob blobby. The back stitching, these are all about the back stitching again as you all know if you've seen these before if you follow me on Instagram. So there's a very blobby looking Peppermint Patty at the moment. I am stitching these from charts in a variety of books that are out of print that I bought on eBay um, by Leisure Arts. This specific peppermint patty is here and it's from the book Peanuts Cross Stitch Magnets. But I have a whole, whole range of them and I've used all different books for different squares. They do come up on eBay, I would recommend a safe search, but they are out of print. I also have this book, which is Peanuts Cross Stitch, and that's quite new, and I believe that is still widely available if you don't want to go hunting around on eBay. So yeah, I'm plugging away on her, and we're on the 29th now, but I am going out for dinner tonight, so I doubt I'll get any more stitching in on her today. So then I have the 30th. So can I get Peppermint Patty finished tomorrow? Maybe I can get the full stitches finished, whether I can get the back stitch done as well. Not sure. Anyway, so that was what I was doing after I finished the apple. Um, and again, it's just good to make progress on these projects. I, I still feel very confident that I can get both these done by the end of the year, but it is a question of just keeping pulling them out and keeping going on them. And I am looking forward to them being finished and yeah. And showing them to you, but also giving them to the recipients who are my children 
and being able to stitch on something else actually, something more for me. So that's that one. And then I think last time I spoke to you I needed to find new out and about stitching um, because I just finished that Lizzie Kate series. I'm pretty sure that's where I was. And I think I said I was going to choose this, but I did. Um, so my out and about stitching is the stitching I do when generally I am waiting because my children are at swimming, dancing, piano, tennis, whatever else it is they do. And you know, when I've just got 10 minutes in a car, 20 minutes, half an hour to kill, um, I this is the stitching I take with me and I don't stitch on it in an evening at home. And I chose to pull out Caterpillar Cross Stitch, Seize the Day. I chose this one because it's one of my oldest whips um, that's of a manageable size to, to leave the house. Because obviously that, that alphabet and that peanuts blanket, yeah, that's not going anywhere. Um, but also because I'd had a lot of success with Enjoy the Ride. And like Enjoy the Ride, this was a Caterpillar Cross Stitch sale that I started back in 2019 and then it, it just got abandoned. And I think I remember telling you that two of my children are fighting over Enjoy the Ride. Well, I've settled that argument by convincing the one who lost that argument that they'd actually prefer this instead, which means I need to stitch it. So there wasn't much done on this. Um, I've been going on this for just over a week now. Uh, and here's where it is. So since I pulled it back out, I've mainly been building those beach huts. And they've come quite a long way. And I don't know if you can see, because it's very tone on tone, because of the fabric I'm using, but also the sand dunes at the back. But they do really blend in with the fabric. This is stitched on 32 count Belfast in Gold Rush by the Crafty Kitten who no longer appears to be trading and it's using all the cord for DMC other than that beach towel in the middle for which I used a Jodry um, over dyed thread that was a thread of the month I think one month I think it's called Heatwave so that's where I am with that I'm going to continue plugging away at that um, it's like a bit like my version of 25-7 and it's not 25-7 because it's not every day and it's not always for 25 minutes sometimes it's longer sometimes it's shorter but it's me putting stitches on a regular basis on a piece that otherwise would probably not get any attention so that's that and that is all I have stitched on since I last saw you as I say April was a bit of a I have stitched every day but it just feels like I haven't made huge amounts of progress uh, so I have a knitting whip which I've just left over there on the bed so I'm just going to go grab it, bear with me. How are we doing for time? Gosh I'm going to have to speed this up or I might have to stop and come back in a bit. Um, so my knitting whip is still Grady Fady which is a cowl. Uh, let me see if I've got the right piece of paper this time for once. Yes, I do. So it's greedy fady. Obviously that's a different colour, mine's white and green. By Becca Anderson using Schulpel Wool Zauber Perlin. And it's a set of seven mini balls that fade from one colour to another. And it's a cow. And this is where I am now. So I think I've now joined the fifth ball. I think that's right. Yeah, I haven't taken... Yeah joined the fifth ball I haven't taken off the fourth ball yet I haven't done as much knitting this time if you can see that purple stitch marker that's where it was last time so probably maybe 10 rows maybe 12 rows something like that but we're really getting there now the end is in sight and I suppose it's part of haul but I haven't brought it I'll bring it another time bring it next time I have bought my next knitting project for when this is finished so I really want to crack on with this because I've bought myself a cardigan to knit because I was a bit like, well, I'm not a very experienced knitter. But surely the point of being able to knit is like being able to knit yourself clothes and stuff. So I bought a cardigan. It's a kit. It looks quite, it's like a beginner kit. So a cardigan. It's all flat. It's not stitched in the round or anything. So I'd have to, I'll have to like um, seam it and everything afterwards. But we'll give it a go. 
we'll see how it goes. Can't be that difficult, right? Um, this knitting bag is by Penelope's Pocket, who you may know because um, they do project. She does Sarah does project bags as well, vinyl fronted project bags. But she does also sell these little zip up pouches, which are fab little knitting bag projects. I don't think my cardi's going to fit in here, Sarah. Maybe I'll have to get you to make a really big pouch for me. But anyway, I would recommend Sarah's pouches as well as her project bags. So that's everything I've been doing. So I think I need to plough into Stitch Mania, really. So my stitch, so plans, I guess. So obviously I'm still doing Whip Go, but Whip Go, which is a bingo game, and the brainchild of Jessie from Jessie Marie does stuff. The numbers were drawn, well, I think she did a couple of days early, so I think about four days ago now, and the Peanuts blanket has been drawn twice. So both my drawers for May are the Peanuts blanket, which I'm actually quite glad about because I'm only doing Stitch Mania till the 22nd, so then I still have nine days, and I think I can actually probably make some decent inroads on two squares on the Peanuts blanket. Um in nine days at the end of May. So that was a winner. So that's part one of the plans, but that won't be coming for a while. And then from the 1st of May to the 22nd, I'm be working on Stitch Mania. Now how I do Stitch Mania is, I've done it every year since 2020 now. And in 2020, I started 20 new starts for the first 20 days of May. And last year in 2021, I added another one for 21 days and this year I'm adding another one for 22 days and I don't start a new thing every day anymore I do the blimey cap method I if a, a whip from last year is still active or, or the year before if a, if a whip from me is still active I stitch on it on that day so for example on the 1st of May in 2020 I started Real Comfort by Modern Folk Embroidery and that is still a whip so I worked on it on the 1st of May 2021 and I will work on it on the 1st of May 2022, although we're going out, so whether that will get any stitching, I don't know. But that's the general idea. And then once the whip has ended, that becomes a free spot in my mania again, and I can put a new start in. So this year I have seven free spots, and I have picked my projects, and I am kitting them up. Now, interestingly, all my free spots are in the second half, so my first new start for this May will be on the 12th of May. So everything, so the first 11 days I'll have a whip allocated to them. So I think by the next time I film, I will only have started one. One new start of the new starts I'm going to show you. And then in the second half I, is when all the new starts happen and all the magic happens. However, they are all kitted and ready to go. I do have a few threads on order for them, but in the main, they are ready to go. So, and how I'm going to select them is I've set up a wheel, a tiny, a tiny decisions wheel on my phone. And on the days I need to uh, pick a new start, I will spin the wheel and that will decide what order these get started in. So in no particular order, what are my new starts for me? So the first one, I'm sure everyone has seen this to death, is Cottage Garden Samplings The Fox. I am on the auto ship for this with Peakside Needleworks but I haven't started any of them yet but I love The Fox. So The Fox is going to be my new start and he is going to be stitched on the called for Picture This Plus Mirage 40 count. I had this in my stash. So all the fabric from this, I haven't bought any fabric, this is all fabric from my stash. I think Stitch Mania is a great time for a bit of stash busting, particularly on the fabric side, but there's some stash busting from my threads as well. So he is going to be stitched exactly as charted because why would you mess with that? So call for fabric, call for threads. Chalk was hard to get. I have some haul that I'm going to show you at the end, which came from, so I'm just checking the time because I will have to go in a minute. I think I'm going to have to do this in two parts. Um, I do have a little bit of haul that I got from 123 Stitch. Kirsty, you know what that is, don't you? Crafting Kirsty knows what that is already. Um, and I couldn't get chalk from, is it Gast Chalk? Uh, yeah, Gentle Arts Chalk could not get anywhere in the UK. And so I chucked some of that in with my 123 Stitch order. 
right what time is it I can show you one or two more and then I'm gonna have to come back and, and do a second take at this right so the next one is Little Robin Designs a sampler in blue and green focus focus on the chart come on, there love that but I'm not stitching it in blue and green because cause so um this is a step all of this is from my stash so I'm going to be stitching this on sorry for the muscle a piece of crafty kitten fabric I used to be in their fabric club so I have a lot of their fabric in my stash this is 32 count Belfast in the colour Fallen Leaf. It's blowing out a little bit. It's looking alright there. I don't know if I've got anything white. I haven't got any white paper. Bear with me. Bear with me. Yeah, the light's not brilliant here. But yeah, that's pretty true. So... 32 count Belfast in Fallen Leaf and I am going to stitch it in blue and gold and I, this um, is inspired by a palette on stitch palettes if you haven't come across stitch palettes I will try and link them below but they have all these free DMC palettes and I found one I liked and then got my DMC shade card and kind of converted it into over dyed so I'm going to be using these three blues and then these two golds so where's the pattern so the blues are going to be the border the green border and the golds are going to be the writing and I think it's going to look fab so I'm excited about that and that should be a fairly quick stitch to be honest it's not massive it's 94 by 100 so not huge there's even a chance it might get finished at some point right what time is it right i can do one more i can do one more and then i will have to um i didn't put any lipstick on i just realized i meant to put some lipstick on i brought it upstairs to put some on and then i didn't put any on i have time to do one more before i have to go and do the school run and then i will have to film the rest of this later so that's start number two I'm going to show you that last and then this one is Hello from Liz Matthews and it's Pennsylvania Bird oh, I love that yes please and this is charted in DMC so I'm just using all the called for DMC and I'm going to stitch it on this which looks very white there but it is kind of a creamy off-white this is 40 count clotted cream there can you see it's slightly off-white 40 count clotted cream from foxglove and lace and i will link them below um so excited about that i don't have much of the dmc because i have all the dmcs but it's all in other projects so i'll just yank it out of other projects as i need it but again this isn't massive this is 90 wide by 122 high so again a decent chance it might get finished so excited about that as well i love hello from liz matthews she's definitely one of my favorites so one more one more uh okay and then this one is from the new beth twist book small samplings this was a late edition i pretty much got all my stitch mania starts picked and then i ordered this from market and i just really liked it and i am going to stitch esther cannon who is this one here uh, i am not stitching it in any of the called for so the called for is picture this plus ale which i didn't have any of in my stash and Weeks Dye Works, Dirt Road and Juniper, which I also didn't have any of in my stash. But what I do have is this piece of um, Florin from Chromatic Alchemy. It's quite mottled. That is blowing it out a bit. It is more... It's showing a weird green colour on there. It's quite brown. And the light bits are not as light as that is making it look. 
and it's definitely not green so if you're seeing green I don't know why but it's not green and uh, from my stash I also picked it's only a two colour sampler I picked wood smoke from gentle arts and this is colour and cotton arugula now I'm not sure if that actually is colour and cotton arugula because I have two skeins of colour and cotton arugula and this is very green and blue and the other skein I have is purple so I don't know which one's right but it, it can't be a dye lot thing it, it's two different like one's purple and one's green so something's been mislabeled somewhere so I can't promise <laughs> this is arugula but this is what I have in my stash as arugula and I think that look really good together and actually kind of mimics the original whilst not being the original so I'm excited about that one as well and again not massive not massive she is 130 by 93 so again one that has a chance one that has a chance right having said that I now have to go and pick a child up from the school so I have three more new start selections to show you and the haul and the giveaway winner and I will come back or well, you won't know because you'll just see me back but I will come back and film that in a little while. Oh, so school no run number blah, school run number one is completed and I have 15 minutes and then I have to do school run number two so I'm going to try and fly through the rest of the stuff. Um, yeah right cracking on cracking on so starts number well five in the order I'm showing these but as I say I haven't decided um, what order will be in is in this amazing Penelope's pocket project bag and what is in here is Quaker Alphabet by La Di Da now I had never seen this chart before I'm getting a lot of glare so I'll just take it out of the packet I'd never seen this chart before and then Sarah who makes the bags at Penelope's Pocket showed it on her Instagram and I just said I really liked it and I don't know if it's out of print because it is quite old it's 2007 and I bought this project bag from her and when I unwrapped it it was in the project bag which was super kind of her and so um, I've kept it in the project bag and it will stay in the project bag till it's finished but again not a massive one it must be said so half a chance it might actually get finished it is can I see a stitch count 110 by 138 so not massive and this is going to be stitched on 36 count linen in latte from fox glove and lace pretty sure it's foxglove and lace I'm doubting myself now this might be Northumberland sampler has mmm oh not sure not sure now I've said that I'm gonna have a look at the handwriting on this tag no foxglove and lace latte from foxglove and lace and that's washing out a bit there that's better and I'm going to stitch it in sulky now I've never tried sulky threads before but I have picked these two so there's this solid blue which is number it's 12 weight sulky number 1293 and a sulky blendable which is it is nowhere near as turquoise as that's showing that is showing very tealy and in real life it's actually a much kind of grayer blue so that is not shown well at all and that is sulky blendables 4055 but that is what I'm going to be stitching that in so excited for that one I have also got um matching floss drop thing with this but obviously sulkies don't really work with that so the next project I put in this bag will get to use that cool piggy thread drop see a very cool project bag she doesn't have any of these left but go check out her website which I have linked below 
because she does have lots and lots of lovely cool bags. Uh, and moving on to another Penelope's pocket bag. This is with the uh, Teresa Kogut fabric. How amazing is that? And what can you put in a Teresa Kogut bag? But a Teresa Kogut project. And this is from the Love Lives Here book that came out at market. And I am going to be stitching this one, which is called My Big Bird. And I am stitching it on some 40 count that I dyed myself. It's kind of a fawny colour. Like um, it's not far off um light mocha from Zweigar, it's that kind of colour. And I am stitching it with a colour conversion to over dyed threads. So when I looked at the book, when I looked at the picture of my big bird in the book, it's a good one here. You see that? And it looks like it's been stitched in over dyed threads. But then when I looked at, and I absolutely love this. This is kind of why I bought this book. And when I looked at the um, materials list, it's all DMC. And I thought, oh, it doesn't look like it's stitched in DMC. And this book is, Teresa Kogut has a Patreon, which I am not a member of. But these patterns, I believe, were all released to her Patreon site first. And then she released them in this book for market. And all the models are stitched by someone who's one of her Patreons. And it, say, it says who stitched each chart. And the name next to my big bird is someone I follow on Instagram. I, I didn't know it was the same person, but I messaged them and I said, is this you? And if so, would you mind sharing what you stitched in? And she was really, really, really lovely. And she said, no, of course, I'm happy to share. And so she sent me her colour conversion, exactly what she had used for her conversion. And I, so I have kitted it up with her colour conversion. And I'm so, so pleased with it. So yeah, that's her colour conversion into a whole variety of over dyes. But I'm really looking forward to, for that one to be spun. I say in my Teresa Kogut. Penelope's pocket bag. So there you go. And then the final. Now my first ever floss tube video, I said, I don't stitch fancy ladies. I don't stitch memorabilia. Don't stitch not corbets. Don't stitch fancy ladies, not my jam. And I don't stitch fancy ladies. It is not my jam. But my final kitted up project for Stitch Mania is a mirabilia. And it's this one, the Duchess of Rouen. I doubt any of my regulars thought I was going to be stitching a mirror. But I'm not stitching a mirabilia because I love mirabilias. I am stitching a mirabilia because I am really still quite an immature adolescent. And I, I just have to. If you, if you know, you know. If you can see it, you can see it. And then you absolutely know why <laughs> I am stitching this. And once it's stitched, it'll be going in my downstairs bathroom. But yeah, if you know, you know on that one. And if you don't, isn't she a pretty lady? And not out on my wheel arch at all. Um, I am stitching her on another piece of Crafty Kitten fabric. This is called icicle and it's a really really pale blue and it's an opalescent and I was going through my stash and I was like when am I going to use it if not now when it's 32 count Murano so it's an even weave and that is really blowing out there can you see it's blue hopefully you can can you see it's blue there it is you can tell it's blue in real life but it is extremely pale blue and it's sparkly and well you know stitching a lady in a fancy dress with an appendage on the front of it so where else am I going to use my sparkly blue and I've got all the DMC and I have the bead pack so yeah but no one guessed I was kitting up a mirror 
because I've never done that before. Probably never going to do it again either. But um, yeah, as I say, if you know, you know on that one. So there are my seven starts. Um, I hope you will uh, follow me on Instagram and see what I'm stitching over Mania. And obviously you will see the existing Mania projects as through my floss tubes because obviously I'll be pulling them out as whips and you'll see the progress but I wasn't going to pull everything out because I didn't do a whip parade that long ago and they're all in the whip parade so if you're desperate to go and have a look at my whips you can see them there right what time is it okay I've got to go soon to do the second school run so two bits of haul I was watching crafting Kirsty um and she's going to do a birthday sal in July and she's joining in my birthday sal, so I felt it was only fair for me to join in hers. And this is a huge, huge project. It is, I don't know how to say this, I think you say it, Maria Buenaria. Because I think it's probably, you probably don't make a j noise, I think you probably say a noise because she was Portuguese. So I think Maria Buenaria. 1833 to 1834 but I may well be wrong and it's this extremely cool sampler it's from Queenstown Sampler Designs and I got it on 123 stitch and because no chart can travel alone I also got Quaker Sampling 3 by With My Needle and I have loved this since Mama Loves You GB stitched it and made it into a massive drum the size of a Stilton cheese which I think has to be done really. Although I've never made a drum in my life, so I think I might start with some small drums and work my way up to a drum the size of a Stilton cheese. So here are my two bits of haul. I just remember to have some happy mail downstairs. I might have to run down and get that. But in my last video, I said I was gonna give away these Lizzie Kate flip -its. Um, So that's all 12 months of the year. They don't have the charms, no threads, but all 12 months, they are lightly used by me. And before I sat down to do my first filming, I did a YouTube random comment picker, and I have left my phone downstairs. And that's got the winner on. Hold, please. Oh. Right, sorry about that. It's nothing like suspense building, is there? And then as I went to get it, I managed to knock over the tripod and everything went a bit doolally. So, um, Without further ado, the winner of the Lizzie Kate Flip It, and I'll put a thing up here, is Jodie Freeston. So Jodie, I will uh, go back and I will comment on your comment, hopefully by the time this is uploaded. But please contact me on either direct messenger on Instagram or on the email address in the description box below and I will sort out how best to get these to you. So yeah, Jodie Freeston. Congratulations, Jodie. You won my first giveaway and on that I mentioned I had some happy mail which I also got while I went downstairs um, and I won a I won a competition I never win anything but I won this chart on Stitchy Sally's focus you see there you go on Stitchy Sally's um, floss tube it's uh, it's by Twisted Threads and it's Kitty Cat uh, Focus, focus, focus. There you go. I just love that. I'm gonna change the colour of the cats so they're like my cats. Um, and she sent me a nice, nice card as well. So thank you very much, Sally. It was so nice to win something. That never happens to me. Right. I think that's all I've got. Um, I know it's been a bit broken up and whatnot, and the camera angles now massively changed because I had to put it all back together. But Thank you for stopping by. I hope you liked the project I have picked out for my Stitch Mania and I'm really looking forward to seeing you next time because I'll have so many different projects uh, to go through with you for uh, for my floss tube. Um, exciting to do my first giveaway um, and I'm waffling and I need to go because I have a child to collect from school. So thank you for stopping by with me in a somewhat disorganised fashion today. Um, but I am looking forward to my Stitch Mania and seeing everyone else's Stitch Mania. So, in the meantime, enjoy your Stitch Mania stitches. Bye.